of being a good leader, so he went to a certain man to learn how to be a good leader. I can't remember his name, but he was born on the 25th of September, 1911. So when we really look at it, the King Shepherd learned from A.N.R. Robinson, and A.N.R. Robinson learned from that man, so we are all a product of that man. Let us give him a round of applause. I'm not going to wait for his, for the King's Shepherd's rebuttal. Sir, I'm going to wait for you to go take that surgery. Heal. Yes, my dear. It's a word. Thank you. Thank you. Heal. Yes. And come back with a good rebuttal. Yes. I pray God. There is. Last Saturday, um, a friend of mine, he said to me, um, he said, you know, she went somehow way back in the Caribbean in order to 
to to really come up to the world standard, we need to, you know, step up ourselves a couple of notches. And and I use King Shepherd in this analogy in that uh, he realized that our church need did or needs to step up a couple of notches, and uh, he has single handedly. With the help of us yeah. taking our church the to the next level, yeah. taking it up a, a couple of notches yes. in order to maybe compete as, as a strong, too strong of a word, but in order to compete with the other religions that are out there, yes. with the mega churches yes. and whatever, whatever may have you, he has single handedly. I make no apologies by saying this. He, he has single-handedly, with the help of us, uh, taken it to a direction that we need to go to compete. Like, like if I want to talk about, remember we, the, the Baptist Liberation Day that we had in Brooklyn and all the celebrations that we had at Cafe Omar. He has single-handedly done so. And now today we have sucked it dry. Including myself. We have sucked him dry, and now God is uh, testing his mortality. If, if yes. I would, would want to put it, that's a word. Good word. testing good word. Good his word. mortality, yeah. good word. Don't be afraid. and now he has to go and regroup. Sometimes we need to, we need to stop yes. and regroup and go and come again. And as he would put it, we invent ourselves. And I pray while he stops and he regroups and while he reinvents and while he heals, God will give him a bigger vision. So that we will be able to move from step to step and be able to compete. I pray while he is gone that we will help each other. And today we have well wishes and we have those that are here Beautiful. coming to wishing good luck and good health and that may God may continue to be with him at his side. So I pray that God bless you. I pray that God bless your companion, your children. From big to small and small to big. Your carnal and spiritual children. Beloved in Christ, let's prop him. Have a good, 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 good time tonight. Yes. I don't know, maybe God may, may, may grant me all the way. I just see for with Hi, teacher Ingrid. <laughs> but have a good time and continue to prop him. In Jesus' name, God bless you and God bless you.
give us another round of applause. Welcome to Warrior Jimmy, Father Paul, and welcome to Mount Town Church of Baptist Church. Going along with the service, now we have our first reading. We're coming from James chapter. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Here in today. testimonies and all of these things. And we came here to lift up the Apostle of Faith yes. in prayer. Yes. He's going under surgery and we want God to bring him back stronger than how he is now. Amen. 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 Now, we have our first exhortation from Sister Jasmine Falk. And the theme is what is, ex what is expected of me when my shepherd is wounded? peculiar and hard to imitate. So even should another shepherd call at the same time, I could never mistake the voice of a king. So what is expected of me when my shepherd is wounded? In my personal opinion, the expectations stay exactly the same as they were when I first became his. I say this because my shepherd has always had the highest expectations of me and has equipped me with all that he can to ensure that from his fold comes the best sheep. So wounded or not, only greatness is expected. So again, what is expected of me when my shepherd is wounded? Am I expected to keep my, I am expected to keep my standards high and never eat of any ordinary food, nor am I to drink of any tainted drink. My standards should always be kept high following the teaching 
leading and guidance of my shepherd. I am not to follow any strange sheep, nor am I to follow behind any shepherd who leads a scattered fold. Because wounded or not, I have been blessed to know that my shepherd will supply my needs and that my needs have always been met. And just as I should be, I am expected to carry on with the leading and guidance of my shepherd, ensuring that in his wounded state, all that he has provided and taught to us will not be in vain, lost, or forgotten. As I may not be able to pass on what has been taught and given to me, I am sure that I am expected to uphold and replenish it as best I can. After all, a wounded shepherd is not an incapable shepherd. It is simply a shepherd in need of assistance from those he has equipped and made completely knowledgeable of his teachings. Yes. Amen. Let's give Sister Jasmine another round of applause. As we pause, I'll welcome Dr. Best. Go, and 
and say to Hezekiah, Thus said the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Yes. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years. Yes. I will rest at the fifth verse.
and everyone. matters the most. God will test our faith and our faith will and always will be tested. God will test our integrity that will always be tested. Uh, God will test our capacity and willingness to serve him. You know that willingness will always be tested. Our valuableness to work for the church of God and to work for God will always be tested. We, or how well can we withstand God's testing? For me, personally, without the testing from God, I would not have been able to stand because in falling and not staying down, I was able to find my strength, strength that I did not know I possessed. These are the same strengths that God is making me use to do His will. 
Being tested only makes us stronger and more equipped to face battles, storms, and earthquakes that may come our way. Let us look at gold. The value of gold is based on the carrot system, which is 24 point scale, signifying the percentage of gold a piece of metal contains. How is gold tested? It is tested with acid for pureness. They pour acid on gold. It is placed into fire, and not just fire, but hot fire, to make that gold moldable. Gold is perishable and will come to an end with the rest of the world, or will become worn out or get lost. Yet man take great effort to test it and show that it contains no impurities by testing and placing it into fire. Therefore, if we are considered as gold, how much more may we expect a fiery trial to test our character and belief in the unseen Christ? A belief that is never ending and depends on our very existence. Know that the genuineness of our faith is more valuable than gold and it is worthwhile to establish the true character of your faith by being able to withstand the test. I looked at Job 23 verses 9 to 11 and it says, When he works on the left hand, I cannot behold him. When he turns to the right hand, I cannot see him. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. My foot has held fast to his steps. I have kept his ways and not turned aside. This is Job speaking. How many of us can talk like Job when faced with sickness, adversity, corroded relationships, indiscretions, spitefulness, mutilation of one's character, deterioration of your family? Can we say like Job? That when he has tested me, I shall come forth? That's a question for each and every one of us. How many of us can go through the test and be bold enough to say that I shall come forth as gold? Because you know what? We are only human beings. And sometimes during our test, we fall, we fall hard, very, very, very hard. And it takes a lot of prayer and intercession to bring us forth as gold. Some of these instances can cause us to wear silver bracelets and live in the house of steel. And when I say silver bracelets, I mean handcuffs. And when I say house of steel, I mean in the prison. Sometimes we are forced to cry out like Jesus on the cross, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because we know when we come up against not just a test, but if we come up against adversity, we sometimes think that God has forgotten us. But if we know how to stand strong in ceaseless prayer, we will obtain God's grace and tender mercies, and we will be able to leave the issues at the feet of the cross. My father, my father will be tested in the furnace of affliction. But I read a quote that says, Remember that all through the affliction and the souls of the men, the men are being guarded by the power of God. Go ahead. My father, fresh courage. The power of God is in control. In conclusion, I want to use some of Paul's words to the Thessalonians. Therefore, I pray always for you, my Father, that our God will count you worthy of his calling and will fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you.